Hello, my name is Justine and I'm a content creator and marketing executive. Today, I'm here to talk to you about something I have struggled with my entire life. It is hyperhidrosis. What is hyperhidrosis? It is excessive sweating and unfortunately, I've had it not just really in my armpits, but also primarily on my hands and feet. I think as more people are starting to get this, it has now been characterized as primary hyperhidrosis and or focal hyperhidrosis because the sweating is due to very localized areas in my body. I think I looked up a statistic years ago, like maybe a decade ago, and it said only 1% of Americans struggle with hyperhidrosis, let alone let that not be on necessarily your hands and feet. Now that it's 2022, it's actually estimated that two to 5% of Americans suffer from hyperhidrosis. The number actually might be higher, but because a lot of people don't talk about this disease, this specific uh, case, that it's not necessarily true to maybe that statistical number and the data. What hyperhidrosis means is that my sweat glands are constantly working. They're actually overworked and they actually cause sweating when it's inconvenient and for no apparent reason. Vocal hyperhidrosis can also occur when you do things that generally make you hot. So eating spicy food, excessive exercising, those kind of things. I think what hyperhidrosis really means though is that you're sweating when you don't want to be or you're not actually incurring a heavy activity that might cause you to sweat. Even right now as I'm talking just in this video, I'm not nervous, I'm not anxious, I'm not anything and my hands are glistening and they are sweating bullets. Growing up with hyperhidrosis was a struggle. I can't really remember the exact time I started to really see my hands and feet sweat, but I do think it was around middle school, most likely when your body is really going through a lot of different changes. I think growing up, I just remember being a kid and I never wanted to do any hand-holding games and I honestly sat out a lot anytime I knew that I was gonna have to touch people just because my hands were always wet. Of course, kids, you know, being kids, they made fun of me for having sweaty hands on a regular basis. It definitely hurt my confidence growing up and it's just something that I think I struggled with internally for a really long time because no one ever talked about having hyperhidrosis and I thought that I was always, you know, essentially a weirdo. Today, I have worked through a lot of this and also met so many people that do suffer from hyperhidrosis as well on their hands and feet and as well as their armpits. I think as I've gotten older, I thought that the hyperhidrosis may potentially go away or be reduced significantly, but uh, it's actually quite the opposite. So as I age, I feel like I'm actually seeing more hyperhidrosis and my hand sweating is getting questionably worse. I even started to think that some of the hyperhidrosis was going to my face and this ultimately caused me to essentially look for a new solution. Let's talk about the treatments for hyperhidrosis. Like I said, I've had this for a very long time, so I think spanning all the way back from middle school, I did attempt to use dry soul both in middle and high school and even again in college. Just dry soul is essentially something that you put on your hands. Think of it as like a high intensity deodorant. You put it on your hands and feet, you wrap them up in some plastic, you essentially sleep like that overnight and then you unwrap your hands and suddenly you're good to go in the morning. What I saw was yes, a reduction in sweat, but I did not see it completely gone. And honestly, the reduction was so little that I didn't think the pros and cons of wrapping my hands every single night and doing this very extremely uncomfortable entity and activity, I didn't think that it was worth it. Again, I have tried dry soul so many different times that I just feel like now it's a solution that I can definitely say did not work for me. When I was in high school from 06 to 2010, I do remember trying ion terophorosis 
sorry if I don't pronounce that right, but essentially I put my hands in a water chamber, would have to sit in it for 30 minutes, and it essentially mixed up all the different kind of ions, electrons in my hands and body, made it feel a little tingly, and I did see a slight reduction, but I think because this was a newer technology at the time, I didn't really feel like waiting 30 minutes with my hands submerged, unable to do everything, anything, every single day so ultimately thought the pros and cons they didn't outweigh the benefits decided to not use this I think the technology has advanced a lot and I would potentially try this again if insurance fully covered it only because the machine can be a little pricey again I'm the type of person where I am very productive I'm always on the go and I think it's pretty hard for me to sit and do nothing for 30 minutes and just didn't think that this solution was for me. I have slightly tried acupuncture, unfortunately have not tried it consistently, and this is something that I do think I'm going to potentially try again in the future. I've heard different successes with acupuncture, but you do have to do it consistently. I question if the benefits will really last a lifetime or will continue to last without acupuncture treatments. I can't even say that I saw a reduction in sweat or anything like that just because I did not do acupuncture consistently. One more recent solution that I have tried pre-pandemic is Botox. Essentially, I only did this in my hands just because I didn't really care too much about my feet at the time. With Botox injections, you're essentially injecting yourself about 20 to 25 times per hand. So overall, you're seeing about 40 to 50 injections just for your two hands alone. The Botox is injected into the sweat gland nerve and essentially it helps it, it closes it up so you don't sweat anymore. I've done this about four or five different times now and it worked. The only big massive downfall is that it is wildly painful to get the injections done. So I did this both with this kind of like frozen mechanism. Essentially there was freezing cold air being shot out of a machine and it would hover above my hands as they injected and or right before they injected me in order to essentially kind of freeze, ice out my hand so I wouldn't feel so much pain. I've done the Botox injections both with this and without this and of course was wildly a lot more painful without this. The procedure just starts as you put some numbing cream on and you ice your hands really to reduce the nerves there. And then of course you're injected about 20 to 25 times per hands. I needed to be held down. I was screaming in the office. My sister actually came once with me to film it for YouTube and she slowly put the camera away because she realized that it was very, very painful and no one needed to see this. I did try to find some place to do the Botox injections in my hands when I moved to Philadelphia during the pandemic, but unfortunately have not found any practitioner that does this specifically for hands. I think the Botox injections are a lot more common for armpits, and I do think that if you do have hyperhidrosis in your armpits, it's definitely worth a try. I do think it's also worth trying in your hands and feet, but you have to have a pretty high pain tolerance. Finally, the last solution, and this is the current solution that I'm actually on right now, is using glycopherolate. I can't even pronounce the actual drug. I'll put it here though. Glycopherolate? Glycopherolate. I'm just gonna call it glycopherolate. So this is actually a drug that is used for patients that are actually, I, th I think it's a kidney disease or they're having kidney issues, but essentially this drug, it makes you stop sweating. It makes your body actually produce less amount of, let's call it liquid, and that ultimately includes sweat. In general, you take one to five tablets in order to really suppress the sweat coming out of your body. I've been taking this pretty consistently for the past two months, and I found that, of course, I didn't want my body to get used to the medicine. Just similarly, like if you took a Tylenol every day, eventually it might not work. I've been playing around based on you know how sweaty I am. I think a little bit of anxious and nervousness comes into play, and 
and as well as how much I'm exercising. So far, it seems that, you know, I need to take one in the morning, one in the evening, sometimes more, sometimes less. Ultimately, if I know that I'm going to maybe be in a situation I might be uncomfortable that might cause more sweating, I might go ahead and take an extra pill just so that my body might just have a more normal reaction to what everyone else feels as opposed to what someone with hyperhidrosis might experience in which might be excessive sweating of the face, excessive sweating on the hands and feet. You know, uh, these are things that I think you don't really think about otherwise, but for people that suffer with hyperhidrosis, they think about it regularly. Adapting to hyperhidrosis, of course, was very difficult, but I have found a few different methods to ultimately cope with this disease. One of the things that I feel like I've just naturally adapted is darker clothing and with the exception of white. I think because you can't see sweat so prominently on black or navy clothing that a lot of my wardrobe has naturally become, you know, dark, black, a lot of those kind of tones and features. I found that when I did wear a colored shirt, let's say, you know, a pink or a blue shirt, you can almost immediately see those like armpit stains within, let's say, five to 10 minutes, just because I'm excessively sweating all the time. I think because my hands sweat so often and I wipe them on my hands and shirt, that also was a reason why I went with darker clothing, just because you essentially wouldn't see the sweat as often. In addition, in terms of tops, I rarely wore long sleeves and if I did wear a long sleeve it was likely a black long sleeve. I think wearing sleeveless shirts do really help to kind of like air things out a little bit on the armpits and I found that you know wearing the dry tech, the dry fit kind of materials, those things do help just kind of keep my body cool throughout the day. In addition, I really adapted wearing a lot of layers ultimately because I knew that first layer, whatever I wore, would ultimately have sweat soaked through. I adapted a lot of hoodies, sweaters, cardigans, even wearing blazers where I would wear shirts on the inside that I knew were just going to be destroyed with sweat but no one would ever really see it because of the extra layer that I had on top. And you only would really see, you know, the hoodie, the sweater, the cardigan, whatever it was. Fun fact, one of the reasons why I am a sneakerhead is because of hyperhidrosis. I love sneakers. I love that, you know, my foot is essentially enclosed and no one would ever know that I suffer from hyperhidrosis. Of course, wearing heels with this disease is a little bit of a struggle. It was very difficult to always find the right height, the right open toed shoe, and then the right material that your foot sat on. Shoes like Birkenstocks that have like a suede material for the, what we would call an insole in a sneaker. I think those really play into what is important for people who suffer from hyperhidrosis really need. I remember every single year for the longest time, I would always prepare to buy myself brand new rainbow sandals just because every single year throughout the summer, I would soak right through them. I will say that the rainbow sandals still hold to probably one of the best shoes for people with hyperhidrosis who do want, you know, a thong sandal or a sandal out and about. I also think that Birkenstocks do also do this just as well. My mom is a big believer in wearing them. I personally have not had a pair of Birkenstocks yet. Hopefully one day it will be soon to come. I definitely also wore a lot of booties growing up just because again, the same concept of your shoe, your foot is completely enclosed in your shoe. So no one would ever know that you suffer from this disease. Keeping this in mind though, I think my love for sneakers, I use my hyperhidrosis sometimes as an excuse as to why I need to constantly buy new sneakers. I of course use deodorizers and different sprays and ways to keep my shoes clean on the inside, but you never know, a sweaty foot, you know, needs a new shoe, new home every season. 
One reason why I really wanted to make this video is to let other people who suffer from hyperhidrosis know that you're not alone. I've had this for such a long time and I'm 30 now. I feel like I've really seen and taken the time to understand how hyperhidrosis has really affected my life growing up in both a positive and negative manner. <laughs> you could definitely say the negative outweighs the positive. But hey, one positive outlook is maybe I wouldn't have become the sneakerhead I am today if I didn't have hyperhidrosis. If you've tried any specific treatments or want to share your experience of having hyperhidrosis, please share it in the comments below. I will go through every single comment and, you know, find a way to connect with you. Thanks so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and drop a comment below so we can connect. See you guys in the next one.